What if you want to use the separate function, but you can't? A common reason why this comes up has to do with some of the assumptions that the separate function makes. So remember that separate assumes that you know in advance how many columns you want to create when you split a column into multiple columns. And another assumption it makes is that the number of columns that you're creating is going to be kind of the same across all of the rows. However, a common scenario comes up is that when a cell in a data frame contains multiple items inside of it. So this is kind of one of the tenets of tidy data that we you know, really don't want to violate. Uh, but unfortunately, many times a cell uh, you know, of data actually contains multiple values. And those number of values differ between rows in the same column. And these items might be separated by commas or spaces. And as I said, each cell might have a different number of such items. Have you ever seen a data set that looks like this? Think back to earlier in the class when you were filling out the helpful office hours poll. You were selecting which office hour times worked for you. And there was a nice note that was written by Nick, which basically said, select only two times for each of the days. When you summarize the responses in Google Forms, you get a series of bar charts that look like this. And effectively, each of the days is a variable. And there are multiple categories for each variable that represent the different times. And there are multiple options allowed that you can select for each of those categories. A simple question might be, what are the three most popular office hour slots? And realize that I'm only showing Monday and part of Tuesday here, but this goes all the way down to Friday. So how would you answer that question using this data set? Before we try to answer this question, I'll just warn you that this is probably amongst the hardest questions that you'll ever have to deal with in this course in reshaping data. So I don't expect you to fully grasp this um, or necessarily even be able to recreate this for any of the assignments. I'm only covering this example as kind of an extreme example of the type of data that you might come across um, just to show you that even difficult data can be dealt with using the sets of verbs that we've learned last week and this week. So with that caveat out of the way, let's take a look at office hours data, which is a data frame that I've pulled in from uh, the Google Forms. So what I'm showing you here is a data frame that has five columns, where each of the column represents a day, and multiple rows, where each row represents a single student's response. Except there's 35 responses. Um, and so the question for you is, where should we even begin to try to answer this question of what the three most popular slots are. The first thing you'll notice is that the information we want is spread across multiple different columns. Anytime I encounter a data set where information that I want to compare is spread across multiple columns as opposed to being in a single column, the first thing I think about is gathering those columns and bringing those into a single column. So in this case, I would want to start with the office hours data and gather it such that I create a new column for a day of the week. I create a new column that contains the time. And then I actually gather all five columns Monday through Friday. Remember when you look here and you compare this against the last slide, there was no column called day of week. So that's actually a new column that's going to be created that will contain those uh, column names that I'm gathering Monday through Friday. The values underneath those column names Monday through Friday are the actual time slots. And so the second argument I give to the gather function is the uh, time variable, which will create a new variable called time that will actually contain those uh, time slots within it. If you look carefully, you'll notice that there's backticks uh, surrounding the you know, Monday's space parenthesis select only to end parenthesis. 
as well as the Friday select to uh, end parenthesis. And so you might be wondering how the heck I typed that and what do those mean? Why are those black ticks in there? So when I was actually typing this in our studio, I did not type those back ticks. What I actually typed was M-O-N, and then I hit the tab key. I saw Mondays pop up, I clicked on it, and those back ticks got inserted automatically. The reason the back ticks got inserted is that the back ticks signify that the column name is unusual. Typically, this means it has characters in it that are considered reserved characters with special meaning. For example, spaces and parentheses. So if I took those back ticks out, uh, R wouldn't know what to do with the space that comes after Mondays because it would think that um, I'm basically moving on to a different part of my code. So the way you can preserve those special characters like spaces inside of variable names is to surround those variable names with back ticks. And when you actually kind of just type in, start typing in the name of the variable and hit tab, when you select the variables, the back tick will get inserted for you. So there's nothing that you need to do. Just leave it there and make sure not to remove it. So surrounding unusual column names with back ticks lets you use the variable names even if they contain spaces or other unusual characters. So when we gather the office hours data um, and create the column day of week time and gather the columns Monday through Friday, here's what we get. And I'm only showing you the first couple of rows here. We get a column called day of week, which contains, in this case, Mondays. But, you know, if you kept going further down, would have all the values down through Friday. And then it has all of the different time slots that worked for a given student. And so in this case, uh, in the first row, you can see that both 11 a.m. to noon and 1 to 2 p.m. worked for that student. If you go down to the fifth row, you'll notice that only 1 to 2 p.m. worked for that student. And so there's multiple options selected for each of the times. And so each cell actually contains more than one value, which is the thing that's violating the tenant of tidy data, where each cell should really just be one value. How do we separate out those uh, values so that 11 a.m. to noon and 1 to 2 p.m. actually is listed separately in separate rows? Ideally, we'd want to use separate, but we can't. And the reason we can't is that we'd have to name all of the columns that we're creating and the number of columns is unpredictable because even just from the looking at the five rows here, while some of the columns have five possible, I mean, have a, a two options selected, uh, other values of time, there's only, you know, students have only selected uh, one option. And so right off the bat, we can't predict the number of columns that would be created if we use just the separate function. When a cell contains multiple values, but the number of values is not consistent across different rows in the same column. The preferred function is to use separate rows as opposed to just separate. So what separate rows does is takes the values and instead of creating uh, a new column, you know, based on the uh, presence of a separator, it actually just creates new rows where each of the rows is a copy of the last row with just that value uh, that you separated on being different. And so in this case, if you take start with office hours data, gather Monday through Friday, and create those variables day of week and time, and then you separate the rows uh, based on the time variable, you'll notice that there's no new columns that get created. Instead of new columns being created, the information that was previously uh, separated by a semicolon gets turned into new rows. And now you have the data looking like what you want it to look like because each day of week is unique and each time uh, contains only a single time. And before, when you had uh, a student who was able to attend both the 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. slot and the 1 to 2 p.m. slot, uh, 
that student is now represented in multiple rows for that slot um, or for those slots because uh, 11 to t uh, 12 p.m. is basically a single row and 1 to 2 p.m. is a separate row. Now all we have to do is count up the number of unique days and times. So once we've gathered the days of the week and separated out the different time slots into separate rows, we will use the same function that we've used earlier this lecture to count up the unique values for a day of the week and time. Because we want to do a count by day of week and time, we first start by grouping by day of week and time. Then when we calculate the counts using the summarize function and say number equals n, we're actually counting separately for each unique combination of day of the week and time, which in essence represents a single time slot. Then we arrange in descending order from highest to lowest, and we can see that Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. and Tuesday from 1 to 2 p.m. are the two most popular slots, followed by Monday from 1 to 2 p.m. So it's not the actual verbs and their syntax, I think, that's challenging. What's challenging is wrapping your mind around how you want to get from point A to point B in terms of the original way your data was structured into the final way that has the ability to help you answer the question that you had. One thing I find really helpful when kind of walking through this is starting with the data frame that I you know, have in the beginning. I actually sketch out the data frame I expect to get at the very end. And then I try to work my way backwards to figure out how do I need to you know, order my verbs and get things set up so that I can use a series of verbs to get from point A to point B. This is something that, that takes a lot of time to get used to, but it's the conceptual piece that's hard. I don't think it's necessarily the coding that's hard once you get used to some of the, using some of these verbs. And if you found this example to be way too challenging, I wouldn't worry too much because this is probably the hardest example of data reshaping that we'll come across possibly in the whole course. But I wanted to you know, go through a challenging example with you just to show you that you know, the verbs are not the, the tough thing. It's really the conceptual piece and figuring out which verbs to use in which order that's the tough thing. But even after all that was said and done, the actual code was used a couple lines of code.